So, as I'm looking at things, I'm saying my volts is like 142 or something. So my volts was originally 102 here. I think I rechecked this in there. I think I responded well. So I'm right now I'm just going to check this. Um, I still have this hooked up to pin uh, 1 and 7 on that same tube to check the filaments. So I just want to see the kick up here. It's at 2 volts. Shouldn't exceed it. Um, but now this is cold. This is like an hour cold. Oops. Let's just see what it does. Okay. So, almost 1.3 volts. We'll let it run a while. I, I think it was 1.2 volts before. She's dropping already. Ballast is warming. I think I want to get the voltage across the ballast resistor too in case I have to replace that. If it goes on the bum, I'm not going to buy one. I will. So I redid this. Where is it? I redid this. I'm gonna put one more dot here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two and seven are the ballast. And I soldered my I soldered the capacitor and the negative going to um, the common negative or neutral. So right now I'm just going to get a voltage check here and here and um, see if I get uh, see if I get um, ninety six tiers. So if this is dropped down to like forty two volts, I'll probably um, drop this resistor where is it where is it where'd it go no it doesn't exist anymore here's the dot i think no here's the dot Oh, 1,000 ohms? No. Well, I'm lost on it now. Yeah. It's 96 volts. Yeah. I thought I seen resistor earlier. I guess not. Imagination, I guess. Anyways, if it's if it's uh, too low, I'll probably lower the resistance and I'll get some subtle increase in it. And try to get a 10 water here at 200 ohms, maybe. So right now we're still at 1 point. About 1.2 volts now. So I want to get the res the voltage drop across the ballast, and I'll write that down. I will write it down here, and I'll make it mark it to hold it here. Let it run for about, I think I'll let it run for about an hour and get the ballast resistor voltage. Not that. The ballast resistor is over. The ballast is way over here. So this black wire comes around here and hooks up to my something over this way. I'll pause it here. Um, oh, okay, I gotta pause it here. Back on here. Ah, shoot, now what am I doing? My thumb hit the screen. Now I put a circle on it. Okay, I just um, hooked up to pin three here.
I'm hooked up to pin three right there and also the common negative and I'm getting 86. Eighty six volts. Well, eighty seven volts. I'm gonna give me the benefit of, a, of the doubt here. Eighty seven volts. We'll call it good. I think this I'm touching this putting this circle on the screen screwed me up. So as the circle moves to the right, it went in better focus. Eighty-seven. I mean, that's not too far off. But it'd be nice to get as much voltage on your audio output tube as possible. So I could probably. Decrease that down to 500 ohms, maybe. And I don't think the filaments runs through that. I think the filaments just run through this one. I don't know how these filaments hook up. I never follow these lines. We go through that one meg resistor and oh my god, it's just blows my mind. A one meg resistor hooks up to that control grid and then it hooks up to this the positive side of the filament and then it wiggles through the, all this stuff and gets lost in this maze. I can't follow that, that's impossible. I'd have to have stationary equipment. And that capacitor, I would assume, okay, I was mixed up the other day on this stuff here a week, a couple of weeks ago. So your variable tuning capacitor, here's, this is antenna. Where the hell is it now? This one. So this must be the tuning capacitor, and one of them is uh, here. Now that one there is a, uh, Calibrator one. So this is maybe, yeah, I'll have to study. I didn't study it. Yeah, I thought there was a one of those around here for some odd reason. So we got a lot of trimmers down, a lot of trimmer ones. Some different time. A lot of trimmer ones this way. Antenna trimmers, whatever. So I would assume there's a trimmer right there. Oh, there's no use wasting all my time on that. Since I have no So, anyways, it works. And it'll probably extend life of the filaments with that higher resistor. I'm getting more stations. I didn't get these stations even with that uh, 1L5 or 1L6. I'm getting more stations, I think, since I dropped the filament voltage, I think. Because I know, I know, on this one amplifier of mine, I'll go get it here. This amplifier here I built, um, I kept having problems with the 20 EZ7. Like there was, a, um, like the phono input was cranked up and there was no phono on it. I, I get the reverse or like a guitar amp is in the outlet the wrong direction and I couldn't figure it out. This goes from 
minus to chassis ground and there's another one someplace that goes to uh that's neutral um i got one of those in it i don't mind it there's another one that goes to grand and i don't know what's that there's two of them one one this one, there's another one right by the impulse pad. It's one EZ7 that also goes from the negative to chassis. But anyways, what I had to do was put this 450 ohm resistor in here. And what that does is, is it knocks the, the voltage down from whatever it was down to around 20. Um, what is it? Let me see. 20 EZ7. Is it in here? Let me pull up the two bolt. 20 easy seven in an RCA book. So now this this resistor is basically across the filaments of this. The only thing about this tube, you, you know, you could use a 12A X7 with the same schematic, but I didn't know the configuration is totally different on this compared to a 12A X7. I know on 6EU7s, pin 1 and 2 are filaments. 1, 2, 3, and 4. No, 4 and 5 on these. I can't tell. I don't think it looks like 4 and 5. 7 pin or 3 and 4, but I know this is totally different from a 12AX7 configuration. I'll, I'll go. It's a 20 easy 7 Back on here. So I had to um, put a 400, 450 ohm across the 20 easy 7 because it was rated for 117 volts. It, it would make it sound real buzzy, real buzzy like you had the AC flipped around neutral or hot towards the chassis. So, But you can use a 12AX7 and I don't think there's any hardly any difference in the, the setup. I use 250L6s, that's the same as that. And so this has a capacitor on chassis for this negative going to pin. So this would be neutral. So on here they have it correctly. Um, And they also have one someplace else that goes to a chassis ground. So they got this one, and there's another one someplace. I can't see it now, but. So if I put the 450 ohms across the 20 EZ7, it drops that voltage down to, I guess, 20 volts, and it works just fine. I don't know where that other capacitor was. It's this one. This one looks like the bottom side of both voice coils, but then that must be a, I don't know, feedback. I'm not sure. The other, there it is. From there to there, we got C12, and at this end, you got C1. So we got C1, final 47, and 12. C1 and C12, final 47s. But if that's for a protective capacitor, that should be worth. 600 volt capacitor should be a 400 I mean a 600 volt capacitor both of them C1 and C12 in case this gets flipped hot gets this way I haven't put a fuse on it 
So this is um, still, still, March 23rd. I got two of these in here. Got two of them. March 23rd of 2023, Orange of Beginner's Corner. I thought I'd do a little follow up here. I up on that because I know I said the wrong voltage and stuff. And okay, here, here they are. These ain't the new ones though. These are. These are um, not the new ones. I'm for 807s and caps. They're 3887 when I was building my 3887 amplifier, which I got to get, get get into gear on that one. It's actually, I'm actually going to use a. Let me see. So here I am. I want to use 6EH7s or 6EJ7s here for the inputs. So I got uh, 12S and 7 in here. This is a defective one. I might go to a 6S and 7. I don't. So here's the other one. So I got to drill a hole for this one. I'm just trying to get the filaments okay. But So I got these tubes in here. I don't know what I have now. So I have a 50 GY7, and I have a, this might be a 38 HE7, or, or a 33 GY7, 33 GY7, if I use two of these, I have 50 filament volts, 50 GY7, If I use 50 GY7, two of them, I don't get enough filament volts for some of these other tubes. And I don't have a ballast resistor or whatever it's called. This one is a what? What is this one? A GY7? I got memory problems since I had my stroke thing. G, this is a GY7. This is a... I think it's GY7. GY7, yeah. So I th I'm going to try a 33 GY7 for one, and then a 50 GY7 for the other. And then I'm going to try a 12SN7. This is a 12SN7, so I just have that in for the filaments. And then I will leave this at 6. 60J7, 60H7, or are they just going to be the same? Whatever, whatever they are, they're going to be the same. 60J7 um, for the input. For the inputs, I'll just have like a 400, a 220K on the plate and a one meg on the grid number two, and a little cathode bias thing on the not much more. Um, same with that. Obviously, I got to drill a hole for that, but I got to get the filaments before I do any more drilling because I probably should have went with a 12X, uh, not a 12X7, but something else instead of this, maybe the octal size socket. So I don't know where I stand with this. I don't know if I should use this. This is for push, push pull for 6225s. So I don't know if I should use the center tap and just one half of it and then the, uh, leave the other side just taped up or should I use all the both ends and just tape up the center tap I don't know I want it stereo so I just use you know that's pretty hefty output transformers no pretty hefty I had to put them on diagonally that's part of my AC loop there I this switch, this hole on the right is too big. I should have went and bought a new hole saw, but I didn't. 
that that is a 90 volt or that's that um neon light in there neon light bulb should be if it's not then it's gonna get wiped out that's a neon bulb so i gotta put 150k i think in neon 51 so i i have to put like a 100 or 150k resistor with that i hope i remember so these are pretty cool this one i want with the green jewel here my 50l6 has a cream color which is really cool looking jewel on it so i should have went with that but on this here too so this stuff here is just fiddling in the filaments. So I think if I do a 50 GY7 and a 33 GY7, that's 50, 60, 70, 80, that's 80 volts. Then I got approximately 90 there. And then I got that, that, and that. I might have to go to 4E, 4E J7 or a 4E H7 or try a 6S N7 here. And then I think these will be fine. I'm not looking for a perfect left and right. I don't care. I'm not that. Okay, and I got my solder bar here for flipping electrolytics to it or whatever. Um, I should have went further with it. But I'll add another one from not from there. You can't do it from the chassis. Here's hot from neutral. I'll have to put another standoff there if I need uh, more bar over by this 38 or 50H 50. E GY7, 33 GY7, 60 H7, and the other one that I have to drill a hole in a 12 SN7. I could go to a 6 SN7. You never know. I have to look up the amperages stuff. I put a, one of those 6 SL7 in here, and boy, that wiped that out in nanoseconds. The, the other one. The, see, this 12 SL7, the, the filaments are... Um, the six, the twelve SN seven, the filaments I think are um, parallel, and the other one, the six S L seven, I think they're in series, and they, it's way less amperage. So this twelve SN seven or six SN seven, I think they're more amperage than the six S L seven. I think it is. So it wiped it out. I didn't look up the amperage when I just put it in. I thought they were the same. They weren't. So this project has been like this for about five, six, seven years. I ground those off for potentiometers. I put Vaseline on them so they don't rust, obviously. But that's that. I should just go to, the, originally it was going to be the 50 L6s, but then I, Decided I want to go with these, so I want to use the the damper side for a voltage doubler because in the schematic, this is the power supply is actually a voltage doubler. We'll go back to that real quick. Let's go back to the RCA manual. I don't know if you can use a, this for a voltage doubler. Or I'll find out the hard way. This is the wrong one. This is the one for the other one. This is not a voltage doubler. Okay, the the one I'm building with the 50, uh, the horizontal output tubes, I'll get to that schematic. I, just, I know where it's at right now. Okay, this is the manuals out of this one. Okay, and that other schematic is out of this one. I'll shut it off here. Back on. So this is the one I'm building with the 38H7s. I should use these. It's got a lot of baggage here. So these say it's 205 volts, zero volts. So this was the one with the voltage doubler. So I thought I would use the uh, damper side of the 
50 GY7 and 33 GY7. I never do things according to, I should just use 50 L6 and it would really simplify things, but I have a octal socket There's one side of it. This must have been a happening thing. Nice sounding, I bet, with all this speaker stuff going on. You have left and right, and then you got a shared speaker. Probably woofers, woofers, woofers handling the bass, and you got your input stages. Got your what bass? You got your balance. You got your treble. You got your bass. We don't put mids on these, just guitar amps. So you got that times two, and it goes here. Got your first audio stage here from the 50L sixes, and it's what I should build. I mean, I, I, all I had to do was take out the octal sockets and put those ones in for the 38H7. I had to take a rat tail file and just clean it up a little bit more than those sockets fit in. But I want to use the those other kind and use the damper here and damper tube here to make it really unique. So this is out of this, this book here. This is my dad's. This is my dad marked it with his railroad stamp. Nineteen sixty two. I was two years old. But that's probably not when he got it. He got it. No, he's got original copyright nineteen sixty two, so he had it back in uh I don't know when he bought it. Could have bought it in 1970. So I was two years old in that year. Year before Kennedy gets assassinated. This is a pretty good, pretty good one. Here's what the, here's what it looked like. Oops. Yep, that's the other way. That's what she looks like in on the bottom side. And one more this way. There's the top side. So I'll decide. I might go back to 50L6. It's actually make it a lot simpler. There's some weird stuff in here. Frequency capacitors with that. I was looking at it. This had some weird. Well, there's a pin in there. A fuse. I don't know what that is. It's 
so it's something metal or it's a flanging capacitor that um, might be a feed-through capacitor. I'm not sure what it is. I can't tell. So that's it. Signing off. I'll get to this someday.